It's good to see you this morning. Wayne, it's good to have you back. We have several folks that are out sick. Brother Sonny is over in Watson preaching today. We need to pray for him. And I'm just glad that you're here. Amen? These are trying days. Difficult days for some. You know, we, we have some members in our church that are just uh, facing the presence of God not too long down the road. And I've been brought keenly aware of that this week. <clears throat> One day I came up here and walked through the cemetery just looking at the names on the headstones considering people that are back there that have so influenced my life. And then really considering how serious life really is. We're living in serious times. And I believe the Lord wants us to be serious minded. That doesn't mean that we can't enjoy things. That does not mean at all that we can't have some jubilant, happy times, that does not mean that at all. But the Christian should always have in his heart and mind that this life is serious. We're not just feeling our way through to heaven. We're to be walking in the will of God, considering the mind of God. In the last two messages, we considered the subject of prayer. Prayer is just not a subject to be considered, but it should be a mighty weapon in the hands of a Christian. I am soberly convinced that we have not scratched the surface. I have not scratched the surface of what prayer is can accomplish. I've been made aware that I need a greater prayer life. And I say to you, church, today again, <clears throat> I would rather be a great prayer than a great preacher. And I mean that. Prayer affects the heart of God said E.M. Bounds, and God affects the heart of men. I can stand up here and preach, and if your mind and heart is hindered, you won't hear what the Word says, but time spent in prayer for you before Almighty God will affect you. Amen? Am I going to quit preaching? No, indeed. Do we quit hammering home the Word of God? No, we do not. Do we give up in despair? No, we should not. But we need to know this as ministers, as Christians, that we only move forward and we only affect the lives of others through prayer. So prayer is very important. I know it's not a very exciting subject. But it's been going over and over in my mind, no matter what I do during the day, this scripture has been going over and over in my mind. We have not because we ask not. Someone said the only limitation to prayer is the will of God. And that's no limitation at all. Amen? Amen? I want to ask you something. Did you deal with the message last week? Is it still on your heart and mind, those of you that were here? I want to go back and just go over the outline of last week. I had some things to say that I did not say because when I went to print out my message to preach, I lost the whole message on my computer. So last Sunday, I just had to jot down some quick notes 
and come into the pulpit and depend on the Holy Spirit. Now, isn't that something? And I want to depend on the Holy Spirit today. I do need an outline to, uh, to guide me. My dad was a great preacher, bless his heart. I hope he's not listening right now. But he had a tendency to chase rabbits. Not one, not two. What do you call them? A herd of rabbits, Ed? A flock of rabbits? I don't know what you call them. But he had a tendency to chase those rabbits. And sometimes he would catch them. But I, I keep an outline. It's for me, basically, to keep me on track and keep me going. So today I have an outline, so we're in trouble. We considered last Sunday that prayer, prayer brings cleansing. Prayer brings cleansing. Does prayer cleanse us? No, it's the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But David of old in Psalms 51 went before the Lord after sinning that, those great sins that he committed, adultery, murder, and other things. He went before the Lord and he said this to God, Against thee and thee only have I sinned. Psalms 51. Did he sin against Uriah? Yes, he did. Did he sin against Bathsheba? Yes, he did. But first of all, his sin was against God. And, and we need to consider that as Christians. Our sin is not against one another in the outset. First of all, it's in re rebellion against God. Sin drives a wedge between us and God as Christians. Sin drives a wedge between us and others as Christians. We need to detest sin, to hate sin. But know this, Christian, know this. There is cleansing through the blood of Christ. You know, the big thing now is when you're, when you're using Christian workers, uh, it's almost not required by law, but a lot of our insurance, our professional insurances in our churches require us to do background checks on people. I wonder what would happen if we did a background check on everyone in the house today. Someone said to me not long ago, you can do a background check on me, Brother Danny, but only go back as far as the cross. I thought that was very good. Don't go past the cross because all of my past sins have been taken care of. They're under the blood of Christ. Amen. Praise God. There is cleansing through the blood of the Lamb. But there is only cleansing when we confess our sins. There was a song many years ago. I don't, I've already forgotten who wrote it. Calvary covers it all. My sins and, and my past and it goes on to talk about the covering of Calvary. And this didn't really say this in the song. But a preacher stood up and said, Calvary only covers what we confess. And that's true also. Calvary, the blood of Christ, only covers what we confess. So first of all, our prayer ought to be a prayer for cleansing. Amen? Then secondly, we said, prayer obtains wisdom. Anybody in the house today need wisdom for anything in the world? I've been thinking on this this week. We need wisdom, don't we? James chapter 1, verse 5, you know it by heart. If any person, any man, the King James says, if any person lacks wisdom, let him ask. Now that's a wonderful promise, isn't it? Do you lack wisdom? Well, you can receive wisdom. All you have to do is ask God. And the scripture says to ask Him in faith, believing that you'll receive wisdom. And you'll have it. Do you know what wisdom is? 
To think with it, wisdom is to think God's thoughts, basically. Wisdom. To make decisions according to what God has said. To make decisions according to the way God is leading. Are y'all getting this? That's wisdom. Wisdom is not something you just read in a book and learned in your head. Wisdom goes even deeper than that. If any person lack wisdom, go to him in prayer, believing. And He will give you wisdom. Thirdly, prayer brings the Holy Spirit. Now I said last week, and I'm going to say again, you theologians don't jump on me after the service. I know that when we're saved, the initial receiving baptism of the Holy Spirit happens at salvation. We as Christians have the Holy Spirit residing within us. I know that. But do you know what? We quench the Holy Spirit. We, we pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and then we do something to quench the Holy Spirit in our lives. Dr. Stewart used to say we leak. We're leaking vessels. We can be filled one day or one hour, and if we're not careful, we leak. The Spirit, the presence of the Spirit of God, the power of the Spirit of God in our life is gone. And I gave you a verse of Scripture. And Jesus said this in Luke chapter 11, verse 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? The Holy Spirit. Do we need to receive the Holy Spirit again? No, we just need to repent of quenching and grieving the Holy Spirit as Christians and ask to be filled with the Spirit again. We need the Holy Spirit, folks. You know, it's, there's not much preaching on the Holy Spirit today and a lot of it is misteaching. But we cannot live the Christian life nor do the work of God without the presence and power of the Holy Spirit of God. What makes the Christian different from the world? Is it because we're better than them? No, the fact is we've been cleansed and we have the very presence of God living within us. That does not make us little gods, but it makes us God's children and the blessed Holy Spirit is living, residing within this tabernacle for a number of reasons. He teaches us how to pray. I, I, I want to say to you again, prayer is more than just saying words to God at the, at the kitchen table. Prayer is more than just saying your prayers before you go to bed or when you get up in the morning. Prayer is much more than just mouthing words. We need to know how to pray. And it's the Holy Spirit that teaches us to pray. Jude 1, verse 20. Well, there's only, Jude, it's only one chapter. Verse 20. You might want to jot this verse down. But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost, the old King James says. Praying in the Holy Spirit. So really, the only praying that we do that's effective, are you listening, Christian? Really, the only effective praying that we do is when we pray in the Holy Ghost. I've done lost some of you. I can see that already. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, convicted by the Holy Spirit, burdened by the Holy Spirit. The spirit of intercession comes from the Holy Spirit. What makes the difference between prayers and praying? It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides us in prayer.
He guides us in prayer. Brother Danny, why are you, why are you just pounding on prayer so much? Because I believe the Lord Jesus taught that we're to be a praying people. He said this, My house shall be called a house of prayer. Praying. But Brother Danny, praying is so boring. You know why it's so boring? We're doing it in the flesh. We need to be energized by the Holy Spirit. James said, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What kind of praying is that? That word fervent means to be stretched out. Stretched out in prayer. And only the Holy Spirit can pray that sort of praying through us. Brother Danny, I thought we were Baptists. We are Baptists. Baptists believe this. Well, what about when we have sin in our lives? It's the Holy Spirit that convicts us to go to the Lord for cleansing. Woe be unto that person that the Holy Spirit does not convict of sin. I'm afraid in, in our day, we have seen sin so much that we become numb to sin. It no longer affects us as it should. The Holy Spirit guides us in prayer. Romans 8, verse 26 and verse 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Praise God for that. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit. Himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Has anyone in the house ever prayed where you couldn't mouth words just with groanings that could not be uttered? I have a friend. Been in many prayer meetings with that friend. And a lot of times in the prayer meeting, you can hear him groaning within himself. I don't know what that means in his life, but you know what? There are times when we can't even speak. But the Holy Spirit is directing our prayer. Matter of fact, He's making intercession for us. Hallelujah. He knows what we need. Verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit guides us in prayer. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying therefore, how? In the Spirit. The reason a lot of praying is so boring to the one praying and boring to thus, us in the presence is because we are not praying in the Spirit. R.A. Torrey says this, The prayer that the Holy Spirit inspires is the prayer that God the Father answers. Did y'all get that? The prayer that the Holy Spirit inspires because He knows the Father's mind. He knows the Father's will. They are actually one. The prayer that the Holy Spirit inspires is the prayer that the Heavenly Father answers. Prayer invites and brings the Holy Spirit in our lives. You ready for the fourth one? Prayer brings revelation. Prayer brings revelation. Now I know where some of you think I'm going with this. 
You think I'm, I'm speaking of the Word of God. This is God's revelation to us. Amen? And you will not know or, or, or have wisdom or get, receive teaching from the Word of God that will affect you unless the Holy Spirit makes it real to you. That is true. But I'm not talking about revelation of the Word of God this morning. What about revelation and knowledge of ourselves? How do you get that? Well, real, real prayer ushers us into the presence of of God. Are you still with me? Real prayer that's inspired by the Spirit of God ushers us into the very presence of the Father and the Son. Literally, no, but spiritually it does. We're in the presence of God. Uh, you don't have to answer this, but I wonder how many in the house have ever really been in the presence of God where the presence of God was genuinely sensed. And as Brother Manley says, when you get, really get into the presence of God, he said this many years ago, you will not leave the same person that you came as. The presence of God. What does it do to us? Well, the presence of God reveals ourselves to us. Not only reveals Him, but it reveals ourselves. And some of you are not going to like this. But don't say too much about it. You'll expose yourself. My dad used to say, when you throw a rock into a pack of dogs, the one that comes out yelping is the one you hit. That didn't go over too big good. Prayer brings revelation. Remember what Isaiah of old said when he, when he was in the presence of God. He said these words, Woe is me. I am undone. Woe is me. I am undone. Job of old said this when he was came into the presence of God, he said, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. When we get into the presence of the Lord, that means that He is high and lifted up in our thoughts and in our hearts. The Holy Spirit is revealing who He is and His presence. And I'm going to tell you, flesh cannot stand in the presence of God. A revelation of God brings a revelation of who I, am, I really am. Paul said this, In my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Not anything, Brother Danny. That's what Paul said. There dwelleth no good thing. Yet we as Christians, we depend on the flesh so much. We walk in the flesh so much. We, we adhere to the flesh so much. We forget these verses. But when we get into the presence of God, flesh is revealed as to what it really is. There's a revelation in prayer. And that could be why some of us don't really want to get into a, a real prayer meeting because our flesh will be revealed. Are y'all still with me? There's a revelation of self. The psalmist said this in 139.23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. What happens when we're into the presence of God, the Holy Spirit Himself turns the light on of our heart. And when the light is turned on, that searchlight reveals what is deep within our heart. I think it was Brother Jimmy many years ago, and if, if you don't want credit for this, Brother Jimmy, I'll correct it later. But Brother Jimmy said this, back in the old days, in our wood frame houses that were off the ground and trees all around it, we had some little critters that would come in at night. We have so much chemical today, we don't know anything about a roach, hardly. Y'all know what a roach is, don't you? 
And when you would come in, I remember as a boy, we would come in from church at night and we, Dad or one of us would flip the light of the kitchen on. And you know what would happen? The roaches would begin to scurry away. They would begin, as a matter of fact, one or two of them would get so excited they'd flip over on their back and couldn't move and they were dead. But you know what the Holy Spirit does? He turns the searchlight on and He reveals what's in our heart. This is an awesome prayer that the psalmist prayed. Be careful if you pray it. Search me, O God. Know my ways. Does the psalmist want the Lord to know what he's doing? No, God already knows everything. What the psalmist was praying, Lord, you reveal to me who I really am and what I have in my heart. You say, Brother Danny, I don't have anything in my heart. Um, Listen to me, church. Listen to me very closely. The Holy Spirit revealed this to me so clearly this week. You and I are not the judge. There may be something so hidden deep down within that it will take the searchlight of the Spirit of God to reveal what's deep within us. I'm preaching this way because my heart so yearns for revival. And the only way to revival is on our knees to to be cleansed and to prepare for the Lord to come in revival. Christians, Mildale Baptist Church, all of the members here, we need to prepare for God to come. We've had a touch of His Spirit in these days. We've had some wonderful services, and I thank God for that, and I believe God is working. But I want to, in my short life that I have left to live, want to see once again a powerful move of God. Just to fulfill my own yearning? No, because I want to see God do a supernatural work among us. For you and your family, for me and my family and my grandchildren, I want my grandchildren to see a move of God. The Holy Spirit exposes, gives revelation. First of all, He gives revelation of our sinfulness. Now that's really profound, isn't it? Our sinfulness. He gives revelation of our flesh. And that's not, that's not enjoyable. He gives revelation of our selfishness. Are you still with me? Some of you have reached over and turned the volume off. You've turned the switch off. But I'm going to tell you, the Holy Spirit has so whipped me over. uh, You know, I'm going to share with you what will help us. He reveals our selfishness. The root of all sin the basis the root of the tree is pride. You can trace all sins back to pride. You say, Brother Danny, I don't have pride. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you pray this? Lord, would you expose my selfishness and my pride? And I guarantee you he'll do it. Amen. He will put you in a situation where your pride will come forth and your selfishness will come forth and your flesh will be revealed. Brother Danny, we're not bad people. 
we're good people. You see, we've been, we've been handed a misnomer in our days, some misteaching. That we are by nature good. It comes from the damnable teaching of humanism. And our children have been taught this in the schools. To now when you preach the gospel, I know that it takes the Holy Spirit of God to save anyone, but I'm going to tell you the gospel is not as acceptable nowadays because most people consider themselves pretty good people. But the scripture says there's none good. And if you didn't get it the first time, he repeats himself, no, not one. That means that all of us have the capability of sin. Our flesh is wicked. And it goes against God, selfishness. You know what we need in our day, what I need? We just need a, a Holy Spirit baptism of humility. I mean, I, I've just, I, that's what I need this morning. And most of us have such an unbiblical definition of humility. That we just, you know, we think we, we, if you go around, bend over, and just saying certain words to repel yourself and the flesh, that that's humility. That's not humility at all. James said in the fourth chapter, jot this down if you don't want to turn to it there, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud. You ought to underline that. God resists the proud. In the book of Proverbs, there are seven things listed that God hates. I mean, he says that God, you, Brother Danny, God hates things. Yes, he does. There are things that God hates. And at the very top of the list, number one that God hates, you know what it is? A proud look. A person that struts like a peacock. Someone said they can strut sitting down. You know, pride, and that... We have a problem with that. Don't think about somebody else this morning. Let's think about ourselves. I'm preaching to me first of all today. We need a Holy Ghost dose of humility. Look at what he goes on to say. God, not me, not other Christians, but God resists the proud. And you think that God knows? Certainly He does. But giveth grace... He gives grace to whom? The humble. You want a double dose of God's grace? Be a humble person. Let's read on. Verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will free, flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw near you to you. He resists the proud and give us grace to the humble. I don't know about you, but I want grace. Do you get the picture? I want grace. Do you know what a humble person, the attributes of a humble person, I'm going to mention some things this morning. Of a humble person. 
Are you ready? You listening? A humble person doesn't mean the person that goes around with a frown and a sad look on their face all the time. That's not, that's not humility at all. A humble person, number one, is a person of grace. Because God blesses the humble person with grace. And the humble person bestows grace. All right, a humble person is first of all a person of grace. Now, you still with me? I'm going to give you two things this morning for you to think about. A humble person A humble person puts others before himself. Some of you, are, you, 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 you're through with me now. He puts others before himself. A humble person. A person with grace puts others. Let me give you a better definition of that. That I heard many years ago. A humble person not only puts others before himself. Now listen, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that we just take everything and not respond. That's not what I'm saying this morning. I want you to understand what I am saying. A humble person is not one that just stands still and lets people run slipshod over the Word of God, over the things of God. No, a humble person, there are times when they stand firm and speak firmly about the, the things of God and things that are right. A humble person has authority. This is what someone said a humble person is. A humble person is not someone that puts others before himself. A humble person is someone that doesn't think of himself at all. Oh my goodness. That's an impossibility, isn't it? Apart from the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen? The Holy Spirit said to me in studying one morning this week in dealing with some of these things in my own heart and my own life. I said, Lord, I want to be the man that you want me to be. I want to be a humble person. I don't want to have pride. I, I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to be a man of prayer. Would you reveal my heart to me. And a conversation in the near past came up before my eyes, right out of my heart. And the Holy Spirit said this to me, not audibly, but the Holy Spirit doesn't have to speak audibly. <laughs> the Holy Spirit said, how did you respond in this situation? And I bowed my head in shame. I, I know, church, that this is, this is deep and it's, it's, it's tough to deal with, but it's in the Bible. And if we want to walk with God, this is what we need. We need the Holy Spirit to energize us to be a people of grace. A person of grace. Did you know that Jesus was the only perfect man that walked in humility on this earth? Well, you know that, don't you? Jesus never defended himself. When they accused him of all of these hideous crimes that they said he was worthy of death of, he simply said, Thou sayest it. But the person walking in the Spirit of God doesn't have to defend themselves. 
I had one of my mentors tell me that many years ago. Danny, you do not have to defend yourself. There are positions that you have to defend, but you don't have to defend yourself. The person walking with God, God will vindicate and defend them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't worry about it. That's easy to say, isn't it? Draw near to God, and He'll draw nigh to you. Now, I'm, I'm, I know that I, I've got two or three more points, but I'm, I'm finished. Prayer will keep us in the presence of God and keeps the searchlight of the Spirit of God upon us. And it, it does a lot of other things that I can't deal with this morning. We don't have time, but I want to tell you, prayer... Prayer will control the tongue. Your brother Danny, that's one of your points. Prayer will control our tongue. The Holy Spirit presence in our life will control our tongue. Didn't get many amens out of that. But he will. Did you know that James said, The tongue is a member of the body that no man can tame? That's what he said. A big ship, I mean these big huge ships, they can go across the ocean and they're guided by a little bitty rudder. Well, it's not little bitty, but it's a, compared to the ship, it's a little bitty rudder. And he said the tongue is a small member, but boy, it does a lot of damage. Amen? It does a lot of damage. How many of you in the house, don't raise your hands, speak before you put your mind in gear sometime. Don't look at your wife. Don't look at your husband. I mean, we all do it from time to time. Yeah, you've been in a conversation and something came up and all of a sudden you spoke and you get home or you, as soon as you say it, oh, I wish I'd not say, I wish I wouldn't have said that. Have you ever done that? I'm asking the Holy Spirit in these days because I realize that I'm not there. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to do what the psalmist asked. Lord, put a watch over my lips. Put a watch upon my tongue. Only the Holy Spirit can tame and control the tongue. You know why we do all of this? You know why I'm preaching this? Because it's the way into the presence of God. It's the way to have our prayers answered. Because we believe the scripture that says, if a person has aught in their heart, God's not going to hear them. If there's any sin in the life, you may as well not mouth the words because they're not going to get past the congregation nor the ceiling. I don't know about you, but I want my prayers to be heard in heaven. I want my prayers to be energized by the Spirit of God. I want to do more praying and less talking. I believe you ought to be what your personality is. Some of you like to talk, more power to you. You can talk and not get in trouble. I talk and I get in trouble. Brother Malcolm said this one time. He said, Brother Danny, I get up and preach. And he said, I mean it to be peace, but it comes out war. Church, I love you. But this is the way, this is the way to the presence of God to see God answer prayer. I, I, there's, there's some things on my prayer list that I believe, I'm believing God for. And the Holy Spirit has been revealing some things to me that I have had to get right and make some corrections. I did it. I've been doing it for four weeks ever since Brother Jimmy preached that first message in the pulpit. I thought I got right with God and I, lo and behold, he preached the next Sunday and I had other things to get right with. I preached last Sunday. I had things to get right with even what I preached last Sunday. That's not fair for the preacher to get under conviction of his own message. And today, 
the message is 100% to me. For me to be the pastor that God wants me to be, for me to be your friend, for me to be your intercessor, for me to pray for you and see God move in your life and your family, I must walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Prayer is a powerful weapon in the hands, in the life of of the believer. Heavenly Father, I have delivered my heart and my soul today even though the Spirit of God is doing surgery on me. And I say to you today, Lord, it's not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I need you, O God. I allow the mundane, the temporal things of this life to destroy the victory that God has provided for me simply because I'm not believing in prayer. Simply because the Holy Spirit is quenched in my life. Lord, today I want to lay myself on this altar to surrender to you afresh. To have you do that deep work of the Spirit of God in my life. Lord, I want to have more grace in my life so that I can show grace to others. I want to have more love in my life so that I can show love to others. I want to have more compassion, oh God, for others. Oh, blessed God, do that work. Do that work in my life and in the hearts of others. And we'll give you praise for everything that you do. Lord, help me to leave this place putting others way ahead of me. Father, would you give me the grace not to promote myself or defend myself. Oh God, have mercy upon this preacher today. I pray for fresh cleansing from your blood. I I pray that the Holy Spirit would fill me afresh today.